Do you want to get away from looping and additional DML statements when looking for specific records? Stay tuned while we use some new Salesforce features to build more efficient flows. Hello Salesforce, Ohana Walters954 here with another Flow video. So I'm continuing my series on FlowFest V1 and we are going to be doing challenge number three. So if you're unfamiliar with FlowFest, it is a flow building challenge that is hosted by Ohana Lee and Salesforce Ben. It happens kind of regularly and FlowFest version two is happening soon. If you haven't signed up for FlowFest already, I definitely recommend it. You know, we could be on version 14 by now, and it's open to beginners, intermediate, and experts, everybody competing to become the Flow Champion. So go ahead and sign up. Links down below for that. Let's jump into challenge number three. It's going to be really interesting. We're going to use some um, new flow techniques and new flow features that we have not seen before. So this can be really helpful if you've never used some of these features and to really learn. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like Salesforce content because that's what this channel is all about. Now let's jump into that flow. All right, so taking a look at the question here, we have find the account where the billing state equals New York or NY, and we want to capture all of the contacts for that account. So we're probably going to be uh, using some of the skills that we've done in the past challenges. So if you haven't checked that out, we use things like equals count. Um, and then here we want to update the number of employees, which is a field on the account. That's a standard field uh, with the total number of contacts. So that sounds pretty standard, something that you may want to do in your actual org. Then we have also in here, then we want to capture the number of contacts under the account where the title is SVP. So we need to do some sort of... Um, either looping or figuring out filtering of the specific contacts that we have captured. So there's a few different ways that we can do this. I will show you potentially a new way, a more efficient way of doing this, but I'm going to also talk through uh, one or two other ways of getting this done. Now, before we jump into the actual flow, we always know that I like to look at all the data that we're going to be using for this. So I'm going to come over to all accounts and we're looking for an account that has the billing state of New York, which it only looks like it's the United Oil and Gas Corp. And then it says that we're going to grab the related contacts. So we have four here and then we have four or sorry, two that have the SVP in their title. And really quickly, let's see, we've got, I think it was number of employees, right? So here's our here's our number of employees field, and this is what we want to set, and we're setting it to uh, ideally four. Now, let's jump into the flow and get building. Come over here, and once again, I'm going to create this as an auto launch flow just because that's how FlowFest is run but you could easily have put this as a record trigger flow or something that gets scheduled run nightly. And now what we want to do is actually get the account itself. So I'm going to say get account. I'm just going to put in here just a little bit of a reminder to know that these are the New York accounts, right? Because you can easily, if you have you know, three, four, five gets in there, um, it can easily run away from you in terms of understanding uh, what the values are uh, that you're getting back. So we have a filter in here. We're going to use our condition. And what I'm going to do really quickly just to show you some other debugging techniques is I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this update employees that's a general of what it's doing and I'm gonna make sure that everybody knows that this is auto launched all right so I'm gonna save this and ideally for FlowFest you want to do this really fast you know you read the prompt and you build out everything but when you're actually doing this you may want to go through and and do some debugging for this and, and make sure everything is working properly so I'm just gonna run this and see um, what we get back in here and we're not seeing anything here. It says that we found a record successfully, but we don't know what that record is. So how can we actually show that? So we know from the prompt that we want to actually update this account. So let's go ahead and add our update in here and we're going to use our get from a New York account that we have in here. 
and we're just gonna say update account. So this will at least give us some, if I can spell account correctly, this is gonna bother me. Move this over here as well. So let's save that and debug. I'll run it in rollback and we can see that here's our account ID that's getting updated. And is this the correct one? I'll just paste it in here. And we see that it's our United Oil and Gas Corp and the billing state, which is somewhere, there it is. Our billing state was New York. So it's the correct one that we have selected, which is perfect. So let's get back to uh, actually completing the tasks that we need. We've gotten our New York account. One thing to point out here is that we are only retrieving the first record. We're not retrieving a list and looping over it. Ideally, in your organ scenarios like this, you wouldn't want to just select one account based on New York. That's very specific. You may want to loop over all of the accounts that are selected from this. But just for the prompt, we are going to stick with it for right now. The next thing we want to do is get our contacts that are related to the New York account. So we're going to say get contacts. Go for our contact object. And here's where some of the potential trickiness comes into this. We know we want to grab all of our contacts, but there's a condition that they asked us, right? They said, make sure that we grab everyone that's an SVP and everyone that is uh, just everybody in general so that we can get the count. So let's start off by getting the count for this and we need to set the account ID of any of the contacts to the account ID of our New York of our New York um, account that we have in here so that should be complete and I'll go ahead and save that but how do we set that value into our account so we know it should be four because we've seen that but we have no way of setting it so what we want to do is come into an assignment assign account values and we are going to set our New York account employee numbers and we have a few different options in here that are kind of cool so this is our employee numbers we've got equals add subtract and equals count so we've seen equals count in the past in our past videos what we want to do is make that equal to the collection of our New York accounts so that should or sorry New York contacts so that should get us uh, all four of those contacts in there let's debug and run this so I'm going to skip all the way down to our assignment and we can see that, hey, we've got four, uh, four employees in there, which is great. And when that update runs, since we did an assignment, we're updating our uh, New York account. That update will go through and it'll update everything. So now how do we get our assignment of just the uh, SVPs? Right. So I, I wouldn't want to filter in here and say, you know, title is SVP because then we're going to be missing all of our other accounts. We could we could let's use a duplicate feature. Right. Can we here we go. Copy element. Can I paste it in paste element. Um, we could edit this right and say that these are the New York SVPs update this. So the account matches and the title. The title contains SVP, right? And that would totally work. That is 100% valid on doing that. We could also loop over each one of these. Let me delete this really quickly. Uh, we could also loop over each one, loop contacts, put our collection in here start with the first item. We could loop over each one of these and filter them out and, and put them in a new collection and say like, have we, is, is this, does this title contain SVP for this contact, which will work. But both of those operations, one, when we, when we created the additional get record, that's an additional DML operation. We haven't talked about DMLs that much, but it's, it's additional resources that are being used to, to query this. The looping in here is also can be very costly in terms of computer and uh, processing power. So we, we may not want to do that, especially if we're over like thousands of, of um, 
you know, or hundreds of thousands of contacts. So there's a news feature. I'm fairly certain this was, was recently released, and this is the collection filter. And what this will do is you give it a collection, which we have our um, contacts. I'm going to call this filter contacts. If I can type by title. And I'm going to put SVP in here. So what we what this does is we select our collection, which we have our New York in here, and we have to put in the condition of how we are filtering them down. So we have our list of four people. We're putting this through. We want this to reduce down the number. So I'm going to type title contains SVP, and we're not doing an exact. We're not doing an exact value because this one has SVP of technology. This one has SVP of production. So if we put in the exact value in here, it would not find the other one. So we're going to use contains to clean this up and boom, we have now filtered down when this runs, it's going to filter it down uh, for the context by the title. So finally, what we want to do, or I guess what we need to do is just have this be some sort of value as of right now, or contain it somewhere for, for the flow challenges, you know, we, there's that, uh, subflow that you enter the information in and it's going to, you know, pass it on for your submission. But right now we have nowhere to put this. So let, let's figure out, um, a, a number field that's kind of open that we can just throw this in number of locations let's just do number of locations and this is going to you know just assume that it's svps right so same thing we're going to do equals count because it's a number field and we have our record collection variable not this one which would be four this one is the correct one where we're filtering down All right so let's save this debug run it in debug mode or rollback mode and we can see here you know we've got oh I've left the additional one in there we'll have to take that out um, but we can see here filtered items equals two and it's and it's printing out let me move my let me move my big head out the way I think I had that that issue last time right so we can see here that we are filtering down the collections um, by two and these are the two people that we have left we've got the SVP of product and SVP of technology which is great and, and then we're setting the, the fields in here number of locations which would be like number of SVPs and then we've got the number of employees which is it, it's perfect right we've just used this new feature to filter down the information that we're looking for and we are good to go let's edit the flow clean this up a little bit uh, da, da, da. Oh no, sorry. I am I am completely mixing myself up. These are correct. These are totally correct. Um, here's our get accounts and here's our get contacts. Um, so we are good there. For the most part, that that's it. We have completed FlowFest. There would be another submission, uh, a subflow that would submit our information. But for the purposes of demonstrating this, we we've completed it, right? And we can we can run this in uh, non debug mode just to get the updates through. So non non rollback, I'm gonna run it. We'll come over to our United Oil and Gas. We see that our employees are, th this is before I refresh it, so it's at a really high number and number of locations. Let's refresh it here. And I'm wondering if, so we've got number of locations is two, which is perfect, and number of employees, which is four. So everything worked out here. Um, we, we were able to filter the records down successfully and uh, use this new feature to be more efficient in our flows. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Leave a comment down below if you're going to be participating in the next upcoming FlowFest. I hope to see you there. I'm Walters954, and remember, I believe in you.